Okay, so I'm going to do another video because it's still MS Awareness Week and in this one I'm going to explain what MS is because it's such a mysterious thing to actually have. I mean, no one knows why people get it, no one knows the causes and most importantly no one knows how to cure it currently. So it's very confusing and it's a very confusing thing to have and it's completely unpredictable you just don't know from day to day how you're going to be. So I'm going to try and explain it because when I first got diagnosed I knew of friends who um, maybe had a parent who had it. I knew it wasn't a particularly nice thing to have but I had no idea what it actually was. So I'm going to try and explain it and I'm going to use my year 9 art sats qualification and draw diagrams. Are you ready? <laughs> oh my god. This is not going well. Um, so yeah, this is why I didn't pursue a career in art. Oh. <laughs> I definitely should have done this in black as well. That is the central nervous system. Now I'm going to have to do it in black. I really don't know what I'm doing here. Oh my god. Okay. And everything that we do depends on this system working correctly. Whether it's stuff that we notice that we're doing or stuff that we don't notice we're doing. And so what happens when everything's working correctly is we've got the brain and then say this is a nerve to do with your left arm. Let's do the left arm in green. It gets worse. Right, so this is, <laughs> that is your left arm. Can you see? I have talent. You can't even see that, but that's probably for the best. When everything's working correctly, signals travel from the brain down the nerve to do with the left arm and so you can move your left arm you're moving you're grooving and everything is fine let me introduce another player to the game called ms that is the immune system i know the immune system is made up of t cells b cells and nk cells natural killer cells would be good if I chose pens that had ink. Immune system. When the immune system is working correctly, what it does is it kills stuff that's harmful to you. So germs, basically. So let me draw something else. That is a cold and the immune system doesn't like the cold. That's bad. So it goes over to the cold and kills the cold. The immune system has done its job everything is right in the world. With MS, the immune system works incorrectly and it's not really sure what causes it to work incorrectly. It could be stress that triggers it, it could be an infection, it could be being overtired. No one really knows why the immune system works incorrectly. I'm just rattling my pens around. The immune system is working incorrectly. Can you see? They are on red alert. They are on full attack mode. But what are they attacking? Time for another diagram. <laughs> I'll just do it here. This nerve, remember, controls your left arm. Nerves are protected by something called myelin, like a myelin sheath, that's what it's called. That, you're gonna have to use your imagination to cope with this, because this is me being creative. This nerve, is controlling the left arm. This is the myelin that protects the nerve. And what happens with the myelin is messages travel down from the brain, down the spinal cord, they get to the nerve and they travel smoothly along the nerve. All the messages travel down uninterrupted, everything is fine, working as it should. Here is the immune system again. What happens with MS is the immune system, where's it going? Oh no. It's in the brain. Attacking immune system is in the brain. And it, oh, I just hit myself in the face. It 
starts to attack things. I need a freaking pen that works. Looks something like that. And I've drawn seven because I had seven lesions in my brain. So this is my brain now, because the immune system got up there and started attacking. So I've got seven lesions in my brain. But what happens is it thinks that the myelin is like a cold. And what did it do to the cold? It destroyed the cold. So it does the same thing to the myelin. It starts attacking it. And it can either make holes. Bloody pen. So it can make holes or it can completely destroy it. So what happens when messages try to travel down the nerve if it's got some sort of myelin issue going on? It travels down the nerve. With these holes they can get around so maybe the messages are travelling slower down the nerve but it can still get past but it's travelling slower until it hits this one and it can just, the message can just shoot off somewhere else. But with this one it travels down, gets to the nerve there's no myelin, so there's no messages. It can't travel down the nerve, so you can't move it. You can't move that left hand, which is what happened to me. I couldn't move my left arm or my left leg. So that's what happens. Also, once the immune system starts attacking and you start to have a relapse, there's nothing you can take whilst you're in that relapse. There's nothing you can do to stop the relapse. So for me it started off with waking up thinking I had a numb arm and leg and by the end of the relapse I was paralysed in my arm and in my leg and there was nothing I could do in that time, like no magical pill I could take to stop the attack running its course. The attack will always run its course until it's done. The attack is now done. <laughs> the body is pretty amazing and it can start to repair the myelin. It takes time, but it can start to repair the myelin. And once the myelin is repaired, the messages can start travelling down again and things can start working again. The myelin can repair itself, however it can't repair itself to the extent it was before, so it's not as strong as it used to be. I've had a full recovery after my first attack. And to people who see me, they probably would not notice that anything has changed or anything even happened, which is good. That's what I want people to think. But I know that something has happened because I can feel that something has happened. I notice it mostly when I'm exercising. When I'm going for a run, I can only push off with my right leg. So when I'm running, it's my right leg doing all of the work. I can especially feel it when I'm cycling because I'm cycling and my right thigh is on fire and my left thigh is having a great time because it's not doing anything. Because the myelin has rebuilt itself but it's not as strong as it once was, that's permanent nerve damage. The messages from the brain travel down the nerve, like it's great, I've got full range of movement back, I honestly could not be happier, but it travels a bit slower. So when I'm moving quicker, for example, when I'm running, I don't have the time, the messages don't have the time to travel down the nerve for it, for me to be able to push off with it as well. So my good old right leg takes the hit. So that's what happens. These lesions in the brain are areas where the brain has got damage. The body is honestly amazing and it can, where it would be sending messages through those areas, it can send them round, send them a different way, make a new route for the messages to travel down so the messages still can get about. But there's only so many times that the body can repair the myelin and there's only so many times the brain can sort of reroute itself. And so that's why there's a real risk of disability with MS and disability progression because if you can't get any messages down the nerve, as I found out, you can't move it. And there's nothing currently that you can take, no drug that will repair the myelin, that will remyelinate nerves. It's something that the, the body does by itself and you can't do anything to help it or speed it along. You've just got to let your body do it. The MS that I have is relapsing remitting. This was a relapse. I've recovered from the relapse and I'm now in remission um, and I'm quite happy staying here and I'll be in remission until I have another attack and 
Um, it's completely unpredictable. I don't know when I'm going to have another attack. I don't know if I'm going to have another attack. I could have another attack um, tomorrow. I could have another attack in 10 years, in five years, um, in one year. It's really completely unpredictable, which makes the condition so hard to live with because you don't know what's around the corner. I mean, you literally don't know what's coming. It's completely unpredictable, pretty much uncontrollable once it starts. I mean, you can ha take and be on disease modifying therapies to lower your chance of relapses and lower your relapse rate, which is what I've had. I'm on a disease modifying therapy called Lemtrada. But yeah, every time you have a relapse, you're getting areas of the brain damaged so you don't want any relapses basically because they're not very nice when i was in hospital i had a brain scan which showed i had seven lesions in my brain and two in my spine so i had two strips following down my uh spinal cord as well i then had a repeat brain scan when i got out of hospital six weeks later and it showed i had another two lesions in my brain so we're up to nine now and that's in the space of six weeks. So the disease was um, going for me. I say was because I've had one course of Lemtrada and I haven't had a repeat brain scan after that. Um, so I don't know what's going on um, in my brain, but I feel fine and I haven't had any noticeable relapses. So I can only hope for the best and assume that it's worked. But yeah, that's the first stage of MS, relapsing, remitting. And the next stage is um, secondary progressive MS. I actually looked up a statistic yesterday, which said that 65% of people with relapsing, remitting MS, so me, will eventually go on to have secondary progressive MS within 15 years of diagnosis. Um, so I got diagnosed at 22, which gives me until 37 before I get to that um, stage. That stage of MS um, is a really nasty stage um, where basically everything just declines. I don't know if you can see my arrow. God, going down. You can't even see this one either. But anyway, things are declining and that's where your rate of disability increases and it's really really nasty and I met a lot of people um, whilst when I was in the second hospital I was in who had secondary progressive MS and it is really nasty and it's um, not a very nice thing to live with at all. It's really mean. <laughs> Of what it does to your body. I know I just said 65% and 15 years. I feel like my outlook with MS is going to be completely different to that because number one, I have youth on my side. Number two, I've had Lemtrada, which I'm going to explain in a second. And number three, research in MS is moving so quickly. 20 years ago, there was nothing, no treatment that people can take. And now, there are loads and loads of disease modifying therapies that people can start which will alter the course of their MS and the quicker you start a disease modifying therapy to when you get diagnosed the better and I obviously got diagnosed in October, I chose my disease modifying therapy and I had my first course of treatment in December so it was really quick and although the first attack that I had was really bad and I would never want anyone ever to go through that and I really wouldn't be able to go through it again. Because it was so severe and so sudden it really got me to the right places and the right people and the right treatment so I'm grateful for that because that's going to give me ultimately the best chance. So next thing I'm going to talk about is the Lemtrada that I am on. This is the booklet you get given what Lemchada is, I'm going to refer to my uh, professional diagram that I drew earlier. I mentioned these cells are the ones that do this and attack. So these cells are thought to be the ones that attack in MS. So what Lemchada does, it's a two year course. Um, the first year you go in for five days in hospital and you have an intravenous drip 
um, for the full five days, which gives you the medication. It's a form of chemotherapy that was originally used to treat leukemia, so it's quite a heavy thing to do to your body and it's uh, quite serious and it comes with serious side effects, but what it does is these cells, it completely kills all of them. So now they're dying. Yeah, karma. So now they're dead. And these cells are called, they're called lymphocytes. God, I just feel, I feel so intelligent right now. Lymphocytes, and the normal level of lymphocytes in normal people is in a range between 1.0 and 3.0. You go in for the treatment and it kills all of them, which means that you have to be very careful for infection, like colds, because you have nothing that will kill it off. So if you get food poisoned, game over, basically, and you have to be super careful and super wary of people and germs, and if you're going to see friends and if they're ill, then you probably shouldn't go because it's not gonna be good for you. So you've gone in, it's the first year you've killed them all. At the moment, my lymphocytes are 0 0.5, so the normal range is one and three, between one and three, so I've got half of the normal levels. I'm repeating myself, but you've gone in, year one is over. That's it for a year, and then these levels will start to increase until they're back to normal level, and that's when you go in for the, your second year. So a year later, you go in and wipe them all again, and kill them all again. The theory behind it is, when the cells regrow, they will regrow less of the nasty cells and they will regrow and work correctly. So that's all you have to do. Every month I have to get my blood tested and my urine tested. It's a, it's a glamorous life. Because you can get um, some nasty side effects with the treatment, when the immune system grows back, it can grow back and attack different things, um, particularly it goes for your thyroid, is one of the side, side effects, thyroid disease. You can get something wrong with your kidneys, you can get something in your blood, which means that your blood won't clot, so obviously if you bleed, you will just bleed. As a woman, you've got higher risk of cervical cancer, just stuff like that. So I've got to go every month to get my blood and urine tested to check that everything is fine. And I need to do that for four years after my last infusion date. And um, I'm going in for my second infusion in December because I had my first one last December. So for four years after this year, I've got to go, I've got to go every month and I'm going every month to get my blood taken and whatever at the moment. And so far, so good. I, I mean, it's given me my livelihood back. I can live pretty much without fear that I'm gonna have an attack for the moment because I don't have many of the cells that do attack. Um, and it's giving me my kind of, yeah, my livelihood back and my freedom to live not in fear because that is what you want. So I hope that I have kind of explained MS. Um, it has loads and loads and loads of symptoms and none of them are nice. And it's a disease that puts you not in control of your own body. And it's really, really tough to live with, especially in the later stages. So that's the purpose of this week, really, to raise awareness of that. Um, I hope that people understand what it is. I mean, I definitely still don't understand what it is and I have it. Hopefully soon there will be a cure for MS because research seems to be moving in the right direction but the more information that's out there about it, the better. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. And we can all laugh now at my uh, artistic talent. I actually hated art at school. I was so bad at it. I can't even draw stick men, as you can probably tell.